The Sciences for Maneuver campaign is all about how do we get troops to where they need to be anywhere in the world as fast and as efficiently as we can. And once they're there, how do we sustain their operations for long durations, eliminating any energy resupply vulnerabilities and logistics burden. Trying to take technologies and integrate those to provide the soldier and warfighter more flexible, agile capabilities for, for maneuvering in future battle. There's four main application areas that we focus on. One is on soldier power for the dismount. The second is on vertical lift technology and future vertical lift. A third is on propulsion power and how do we do new energy sources for maneuver. And the fourth area is on intelligence systems. The soldier is the most important platform that we focus on with the energy and power side of the house. So reducing the demand of the electronics but also we have to increase the amount of energy that we can provide a soldier. One of our first prototypes is a propane fueled system. Uh, we flow the propane through this unit. The propane is combusted in an area uh, that's contained in here and then we use a photovoltaic cell to convert that light energy uh, into electricity. One of our focus is to take this type of package and put it into something that the soldier is familiar to carry. As you know, Future Vertical Lift Program is Army's uh, program to build or develop and field uh, next generation helicopters. So we have a research program uh, which is focused on large scale uh, vertical lift platforms and it's specifically relevant to the tilt rotor configuration. And on computational side, we make use of high fidelity multi-physics simulations. So usage of this high performance computing allows us to simulate these steep tip vortices coming from rotor blades that helps us in learning about the processes and fluid dynamic phenomena that are underlying the behavior that these particular systems show. This is a small engine altitude research facility. It is designed to simulate the altitude from sea level to all the way up to 3,000 feet, uh, and also temperature from minus 40 to 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Our focus at this moment is small power for the UAV propulsion. We try to identify what are the problem of the uh, current UAV systems that Army is using, and then set the requirements so that we can have a better system in the future. Right now, we're in the Microsystem Mechanics Wind Tunnel. So the facility next to me it allows us to explore capability for small UAS, small drones. We've got high winds through complex environments. I've got to have vehicles that are agile and robust. Small quad rotors, you know, can fly out beyond the line of sight of the soldier, help them identify threats before they come. They can also enhance communication in an area, providing, say, a local network. The Army's interests in autonomous and robotic systems differ from industry's interests because we've got the problem of complexity in dynamic environments. We want them to respond to commands in the same way you might command another soldier, a subordinate. We don't want an operator that's head down driving those things. So the future of the campaign is tied to what the Army is thinking about for future warfare 2025 and beyond. A number of the things that they have defined within that particular construct include being able to wage warfare in a multi-domain complex environment, small units, soldiers being able to operate for extended periods of time without resupply and being able to do it in distributed, integrated fashion. So that's very challenging.